are going to jump into chapter 10. So let me just close, not close it, minimize that and open up the notes for 10. Okay. So chapter 10, I titled Mordecai's Greatness. I mean, it says the greatness of Mordecai. It's really just all about Mordecai. Three little tiny verses, nothing insane. So let's read through chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, well, do you guys have any questions first? Before I dive in. Okay, so chapter 10. Um, The key verse that I picked for chapter 10 was verse 3. And I think it was 3B, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was um 3B. But, um, hold on, let me fix my chair. Okay, so chapter 10, verse 1. King Ahasuerus imposed tax on the land and on the coastlines of the sea, and all the acts of his power and might and the full amount of high honor of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? Verse 3, For Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Ahasuerus, and he was great among the Jews and popular with the multitude of his brothers, for he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to all his people. That is all of verse 10. I mean, chapter 10. So I wanted to define imposed. And it's to cause. To affect. Someone. Or thing. By using authority. I'm sorry guys, can't see that. There we go. So to cause to affect someone or thing by using authority. It's to establish or create. In a forceful or harmful way to force to be accepted. Or put in place. So he basically put taxes in place for the people on the land and the sea. That's a long uh, definition, but hey. I have popular, which was here. And then peace. So popular is accepted, followed. By many people liked or enjoyed by many and peace is um, harmony and personal relations. That was tiny. Um, a state of tranquility or quiet. So those are the words 
that I want it to define. And piece, I'm going to use this beautiful blue color. Okay. Now moving on to the actual note taking. So King of Hazardous imposed taxes. This is what I have. And um, I'm going to end up writing all my notes at the bottom. So I'm just going to underline everything right now. So King of Hazardous imposed taxes. And then I'm also going to underline the land and on the coastline of the sea. For verse 2, I'm going to underline acts of his power and might and then i'm also going to underline full account of the high honors of mordecai and then i'm going to go to verse three in a second but starting off just with verse one and two so verse one i'm going to put that note here like i would on a post-it so verse one um where it says the king has imposed taxes Basically, he did this to replenish the royal treasury as they used it up during the two days of battle. And I'm pretty sure he lost money um, during his battle with Greece. If you guys don't know, King Ahasuerus is King Xerxes. So, it's more of a biblical and a historical kind of thing. So, he did this to replenish... the royal treasury then I have two cross references which are Isaiah 11 and 11 as well as Isaiah 24 15 so um starting off with 24 15 since I'm going backwards in Isaiah Twenty four fifteen is here. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea, give glory to the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, which is about, obviously, the coastline on the sea, which um, is mentioned. And then 11 and 11. Again, this is about the coastland. Um, in that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that remains of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pethros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamtha, Hamath, sorry, and from the coastlines of the coastlands of the sea. So that cross reference really just has to deal with um, the coastlands. Actually, I should have moved that one. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just cross this out and use it for the second part of verse 1. So I'm going to say see Isaiah 11:11 11, 11, Isaiah 24:15 and then I'm going to write um that the king had a vast domain or dominion from which he raised a vast revenue. I hate when I get to the end of a book and my handwriting starts to look ridiculous. Um, verse 2. Okay, my eyes are bugging, so we need color. You guys know I love my color. So, that one goes like that. Thank you. And let's use this blue.
I'm going to use this yellow for that part. And let's, nope, we use that okay. Okay, so acts of his power and might. Um, the king was a mighty man, but the focus was not on him. He was not a Jew, basically, because it just mentions that he had mighty, um, that he had might and power, but then it just jumps straight into Mordecai. So, um, the king was a mighty man. The full account of high honor of Mordecai. Basically, Mordecai was a great... Eh? Oh, no. I don't know what that is. They're going to have to... Yeah. Sorry, guys. I just got a text. Um, But Mordecai was a great man among his people and um, those not of his people. He became second to the king, showing that he was the king's favorite for many reasons seen throughout the book of Esther. Mordecai was virtuous, he was loyal, he was kind, he bore the fruits of the spirit, and he never went out of the will of um, God, and he was also a man of merit, so. He was second to the king and favorite. He was loyal. For fruits of the spirits. And a man of merit. And then verse 3, I have quite a lot. You got disconnected. Um, are you good now, Nora? I'm just now seeing that comment. All right, so verse three, I have quite a few things to underline. So, verse three, we have for Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Ahasuerus. We're going to underline that. Or, well, that's at least what I'm underlining uh, to King Ahasuerus. I'm underlining that he was great among the Jews. Popular with the multitude, he sought the welfare of his people, and finally that he spoke peace to all his people. So, for Mordecai the Jew was second rank in, sorry, second in rank to King Ahasuerus. Um, this basically gives him a unique place in the Jewish history. And it's also kind of a reminder of Daniel in Babylon and Joseph in the Pharaoh's Egyptian court. It kind of proves that um, God's people still lived victoriously even when scattered among the nation. So.
Then I have 2 Chronicles 28, 7. And then Genesis 41, 40 as a cross-reference. But before I get into that, yeah, I know the drill. Color, because I can't see. I think I need three more colors. Um, Let's use this yellow. Okay. I just had to get those colors there. So for, uh, where is it? Verse 3, for Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to the king Ahasuerus. I said that it proves that God's people still live victoriously while scattered. And then the cross references are Second Chronicles 28 and 7. And my arm itches 28-7. Um, here it is. And Zechariah, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Messiah, the king's son, and Azrakim, the commander of the palace, and Alkna, the next in authority to the king. So that's about Judah's defeat. And then Genesis 41 and 40. Just pass it 41 and 40. 41 and 40. You shall be over my house and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. And this is when Joseph rises to power. So it's kind of showing the examples of um, Joseph. Like I said, how... This situation with Mordecai reminds me of Joseph and Pharaoh's Egyptian court. So that's that. Moving on to the second part where it says he was great among the Jews. He was not only above them in power and statue, but he was familiar, friendly, and respected by them. So he was great in power. but also friendly and respected. So verse three again, where it says popular with the multitude of his brothers um, because of his character, he was well known and not despised by many people. I'm going to say many people because we don't know. There are probably still some people within the Persian Empire that did not like him. But it's not being made known towards the close of this chapter. So, um, because of his character... He was well known and I mean either way I don't think anyone would despise him for his character just for their personal reasons Verse 3, where it says, sought the welfare of his people. In his position, he did not just seek to benefit himself like Haman did, but he sought to benefit the king and his people in an equal manner that wouldn't clash so much. So, um, he did 
didn't seek personal. Benefits like Haman. Haman wanted all the respect and the money and the power. Oh, my arm is itching. He sought to benefit the king and his people. And the last note that I have is for spoke to all, spoke peace to all his people. And this is probably where Esther gets it from because we know that Esther always spoke peace and grace. Um, he was humble. Never let power. overtake him and then I have Psalms 122 8 through 9 sorry you can't see it so um he was humble never let power overtake him Psalms 122 8 through 9 oh sorry again about shaking the camera I'm gonna figure this out before we dive into John <laughs> 8 and 9 for my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Which is everything that Mordecai did for his people and that of um, the king. So, basically, chapter 10 is really all about... It really talks about the glory and reign of King Ahasuerus and Mordecai's promotion to the position of second in command. But though these three vo verses really focus on Mordecai mainly with a little bit on King Ahasuerus... We can still see how all this leads back to God because they were both blessed by God. Mordecai was blessed because he was obedient to the laws and the rules of the father. And King Ahasuerus was blessed through his wife, Queen Esther, who was indeed a woman of God. So, that is that. Let me get the comments back up and grab something quickly. All right. Yeah, sorry, Destiny. I didn't realize I didn't have it in frame. <laughs> but there it is now. But um, so now, since I have space here, and normally what I do, my note for verse 1 in chapter 9. Yes. So I had two notes for that, um, Destiny. So the first one I underlined was um, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain the mastery over them. For that, um, I put a note that said many hated the Jews, but kept they basically kept quiet until the edict by Haman gave them a chance to act. So, you know, it's kind of like a situation when people don't like you but won't say nothing until they get the chance to act upon that. And then the second half of that for verse one, um, I underlined the uh, the part where it says the reverse occurred. The Jews gained mastery over those who hated them. And for that, let me just put that back. I put um, the Jews had the great king who had all their resources, which the great king being God, their enemies only had their own understanding in mind. So the reason why it was reversed with um, the Jews now having mastery over the enemies was because one, they had God, two, they had faith in God, and three, they didn't rely on their own wisdom and own knowledge. They relied on God heavily, whereas the enemies just relied on themselves because they finally had the okay to kill. So that's what that was for that. But um, so normally in my other journaling Bible, I normally will write out a prayer. But I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm going to use a sticker. And this is the Faith Sticker Book from um, The Happy Planner. I love this thing. I really hope they come out with like a second one. And um, this has so many great stickers. And that broke off lovely. But 
actually you know what i am going to do a prayer i'm going to take one of these little prayer stickers i'm gonna use the blue hopefully it fits where it says prayer changes things and then i think they give you like five little bullet points yes it does fit um So we have that, and I'm going to write out five things from the book of Esther that I personally want to pray for and grow upon. Um, so anything that I see that Esther or, or Mordecai did. So um, Esther always spoke with grace and respect. She always reverenced people no matter the situation. Sorry, you guys can't see. So... Um, Speak with reverence. I want to be able to seek God first in everything because Esther definitely went to God first. Normally we freak out. We don't even think about God. But Esther immediately went to God. So seek God first is something that I want to do. I want to speak peace to people a lot. So... Speak peace. I noticed that Esther never said anything out of the ordinary. She never was rude. Um, whereas Zeresh, which was Haman's wife, definitely was. So I want to be able to speak peace like her and Mordecai did. And I mean peace to everyone. Not just random people. Because even when Esther was dealing with um, Haman at the feast, she still spoke peace. So I definitely want to be like that. Um, what else do I want to do um i want to be obedient as um mordecai was mordecai was very obedient and i mean like obedient to a t it seems um i'm not always obedient to god there are days and times when i hear him and i know what he wants me to do but i'll either procrastinate on doing it or i won't do it at all and then eventually he'll have to remind me to do it and then I do it so I want to have um I want to say fixed obedience but that just sounds weird but uh I'm gonna write it anyway fixed obedience and I want my prayer life to be stronger and it definitely has been getting stronger thanks to all the books that we've been reading and stuff but um I want to have a devoted, there we go, devoted prayer life. So these are five things that I got from the book of Esther concerning Esther and Mordecai that I want to personally pray over myself. So I got this sticker, like I said, from the Create 365 Faith Sticker Pack for Happy Planner. But, um... You're welcome, Destiny. <laughs> I just put the comments back up. But yeah, so um, overall, the book of Esther really shows how the hand of God can move in a supernatural and a natural way. And it shows how God's hand in history never rules out our own personal actions. I mean, you could see his hand, but every everybody within the book had their own um, way of going about it. Like, how can I say it? I'll get to that. So basically, again, um, the book of Esther shows how the hand of God can move in a supernaturally natural way. It also shows how his hand in history never rules out our own personal actions. Um, the actions of Esther and Mordecai were critical to the preservation of the people of God. And we also understand from this book that God's will is always accomplished, yet we are perfectly free agents. Um, kind of like Haman, he did as he pleased. Ahasuerus did what he wanted and so did Mordecai and Esther there was no interference from God there was no coercion from God but they all had their own will they all did their own will but they also bore the full responsibility of it yet God works out his eternal plan for the ages throughout it so I mean I just think it's amazing 
Esther is just 10 chapters and it's kind of like Ruth where it's a small book it's focused on um these women but when you really dive in and break it up you see so much more from it um this shows that God and his wise and providential plan allows his people to be tested and sometimes severely so we might um oh sorry you guys <laughs> We must not suppose that the servants of God will be protected from every trial because the trials are a part of God's design for our, li our lives. Um, for Mordecai, he refused to bow to Haman. And so the uffers, the uffers, the others <laughs> basically suffered for his refusal to pay homage to Haman. And for Esther, she basically heard the news of the coming slaughter of her people. And she had to basically boldly approach the king to make an appeal when she could have been killed. So, um, we as people of God, as children of God, as daughters of increase, basically, will always be put in trials, and some of those trials will be harder than others. Some of those trials he will help us through, and some of them he won't. He wants us to make the decision, but um, even within making our decisions, we have free will to do so, but regardless of whether we follow his will or not, his will will always, always be accomplished and always get done, whether he uses us. He forces us or he gives that will to someone else. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. What was the note for chapter 10, verse 1? Oh, okay, no problem. So, um, I basically broke up that verse into two different parts. So, um, the first one that I underlined was King Ahasuerus imposed tax. And I said that he did this to replenish the royal treasury. I crossed out that cross-reference because it had nothing to do with that part. So, but for the second part where it says the land and on the coastlands of the sea, I wrote, see Isaiah 11 and 11, and then Isaiah 24, 15. And then I wrote that the king had a vast dominion from which he raised a vast revenue. And um, again, these are my shorthanded notes. I'll have like the longer written out notes typed up for the printable. I do have to go back and edit the printable because I made some mistakes. <laughs> so I'm going to edit that. And hopefully by the end of the night, um, hopefully by 10 p.m., I will have up the um, notes for both chapter 9 and 10. But um, yeah, ladies, we are done with the book of Esther. I mean, we have completed it to a T, which is amazing. This is the second book that we've fully gone through. The first one that we done, um, did was the book of Ruth. And I am excited, you guys. I'm so, so excited about this. Um, we are definitely going to be diving into a new study in July, which I will have... I'm thinking about making a video on it, but more information for the July study and the July book club is coming. Thank you, Miss Joanna. <laughs> you have a great day too. Um, yeah, I really I'm I'm enjoying this guys like a lot. And like I said, I've studied a lot of these books already myself um personally and with other people but i don't know going through it a, another time with you ladies i'm getting a lot more out of it um so i'm super excited for the gospel of john you guys do not understand i love the gospel of john i cannot wait to study the gospel of john with you guys it is 21 chapters it is pretty long it's going to be an 11 week study um but it might be extended only because some of the verses are very long um I think chapter one of John let me get to it has like 70 or 50 plus verses no it has 51 verses but I can't remember which book I believe had like 72 or something like that which was like insane yeah like chapter six of um John had 71 verses but um I'm excited for John. I can't wait. Um, I'm working on the newsletter for you ladies because I definitely wanted to um, update the newsletter because I created the blog specifically for creating Christian-based content, but then it got swamped. Um, swamped? What? It got swamped with a lot of book reviews because I love reading books and I get free books, but I do want to get back into um, doing my Christian 
blog post as well as incorporating that with the newsletter because though I like the newsletter and I know a lot of you guys appreciate the newsletter to keep you guys reminded on what's going to happen for the coming week I feel like it's a bit repetitive and I wanted to add something extra to it like scriptures um verse of the weeks and um different posts and studies and stuff like that that are outside of what's going on in the group so I'm still working on that everything will be coming out really soon within the next uh two weeks hopefully by the end of june i'll have everything out also angela and i will be giving away some of the cling books so i'll be posting an image or a video sometime next week with more information on that because she has copies and i have like a ton of copies that i need to get about this house so yeah um but yeah You're welcome, Stacy. Awesome, Destiny. Awesome. I can't wait either. You guys don't understand the excitement that I feel for John. <sighs> I'm so excited, but I have to get everything together because, as you guys know, I'm going to be doing John two days a week where I'm going to do a live session for one chapter on Tuesdays. And then on Fridays, I was going to make it Thursdays, but Fridays, I'm going to have a pre-recorded video that I will post on YouTube um, in the group as well because I want it to be... A study that I do for the group as well as for the people who follow me on YouTube so it's gonna be interesting to get that study done but I can't wait I'm so happy that I can help you Latoya because I, I know it's really really hard studying the Bible like I said um, for me I've been a Christian all my life I know about I knew about the Bible um, I only knew about the King James translation so I kind of understand the KJV but um, you know, it took me until 2016 to actually get my own Bible. My mom bought it for me, but I picked it out. And it wasn't until 2017 that I actually started studying the Word of God for myself. Um, and it just opens up your eyes to so much. Like, oh, the Bible is awesome. That, that's, all, that's all I can say. <laughs> it's awesome. You're welcome, Tanya. You're welcome. But, um, yeah, ladies, we are done. I'm probably going to do a flip through and post it on Instagram. Because, I mean, we have a lot of notes here. You can't see it right now because I'm so zoomed in. But, yeah, we are done with the Book of Esther, ladies. Um, so, again, I will have the printables hopefully up for you guys by 10 p.m. Definitely Chapter 9, um, hopefully Chapter 10 as well. And we have a three-week break. Um, we are still doing the battle plan for prayer we're actually finishing up the book we'll be finishing up this book this week which oh my god you guys this book is amazing this book is amazing and then we have one more week of the study but yeah i know tanya i for some reason i really want to um eventually plan an event i was talking to angela about this um planning an event for daughter of increase um probably do like a mommy and me event because I know a lot of us do have kids and then probably just do like a women's based event I would probably have to um consult my first lady about helping me with that um but I definitely want to be able to meet with you ladies and like do some studying in person whether it's like a two-day event or something I don't know I want to do a lot with daughter of increase um I'm a little nervous but I do have my first lady helping me out, um, mentoring me with this ministry. I don't like saying ministry, you guys know that. But um, my first lady has told me that it's basically a ministry. But um, I, I want to do a lot. God has given me a lot. Um, but I'm pacing myself. But I definitely want to be able to meet with you ladies and have like real sit down in person sessions where we can journal and study the Bible and color, have some tea, drink some coffee and do all that great stuff. Um but yeah, I'm praying that I can work on that within the next three years, four years. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm rambling. It's almost one o'clock. <laughs> and we are finished with this study. Oh my God, you guys, we're finished with this study. I can't believe it. Ten weeks. Of, well, not ten weeks. More like six weeks. No, eight weeks. <laughs> Because we, we missed the week and did 7 and 8 together. And then right now we're doing 9 and 10. So yeah, 8 weeks. And um, yeah, 
I guess that's it. I have nothing else to say, really. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video I make at, for the next study as well. And um, yeah, bye.